Hatakujo is a Japanese word for chit chat and is the name of a presentation format created in Japan in 2003 by Astrid Klein and Mark Dyson, two architects looking for a way people could share their work quickly and simply in public. Since then, the idea has spread to over 700 cities around the world. At every Pecha Kuchin night, creative thinkers come together and share their ideas with only 20 images shown for 20 seconds each. Pachakucha, a fast fun format. Find a location, join the conversation. All right, our last but certainly not least speaker of the evening hails from the courteous land to the north, also known as Canada. She is so courteous, she insisted everyone else go first. She earned a master's in leadership studies from the University of Victoria and currently works as a higher education consultant focusing on assessment, technology, and professional development. She's a full time advocate for awesome, part time fitness fanatic, always searching for the next adventure, and connoisseur of fine 1990s dance music. She's just your typical Canadian girl, recently achieving her lifelong goal of high fiving a penguin. And serving as the president of the Bring Tim Hortons to All 50 States Kickstarter campaign. I'm sad that I had to save all my Canadian jokes until the end of the night, but cannot wait to hear her talk about falling, failing, and getting back up. A.、Eh? Please welcome to the stage Lisa Andersby. So, I've been thinking a lot about failure recently, both as an adjective and as an action. What I wanted to talk to you about tonight is my own personal experience falling a combined total of 18,200 feet and what it means to fail and fall in style. So, I'm going to warn you right now this is going to be a particularly authentic and emotional conversation. I know no other way to be in this moment than completely open and authentic. So, thank you for being here with me. Some of you may know that ACPA 2014 was my first ACPA convention. What some of you may not know is that in March of 2014, I lost my voice and was unable to stand up on this stage. In May of 2014, I lost my job, and I've been thinking about failure ever since. Now, don't get me wrong, I am no stranger to mistakes or failure. I'm what they call a mistake factory mistakes made while you wait. I know exactly where my comfort zone is, but I step out of it as often as I can. I'm in what Brene and Roosevelt call the arena, battling my way through. So, why was this particular failure so much more different and difficult for me? Well, just like my good friend Buzz, when we fell, it wasn't just a failure in what we could do, it was a failure in who we thought we were. It wasn't a failure in I can, it was a failure in I am. So, what I wanted to talk to you about tonight is falling, failing, and doing it all in style. I want to talk to you about what falling feels like. What failing looks like, and what it means to live within and in these moments, not through them, but within these experiences. So, this is me. This is my first fall, the 18,000 feet right here in Florida, the highest tandem skydive in the world, because why not? This really resonated with me, not because of the direction, but because of the speed. Falling from 18,000 feet feels like busy. It feels like all this rushing that we're doing. And what are we rushing for? As Thoreau asks, what are we busy about? We're busy trying to be rock stars. We want to be seen, to be validated, to be heard, to be understood on the highest possible stage in the best possible lighting. And so when I first fell, I love this concept, Kintsukari, to repair with gold. My cracks were beginning to be filled. I have a fantastic support system.、Um, I've had some fantastic experiences. The light was beginning to come through, and I was beginning to rebuild,、uh, to rebuild anew, and to start again. But of course, when you fall off your pedestal and that pedestal shatters, it is nearly impossible to begin to build exactly as you were before. Pieces of your pedestal are scattered, broken, missing. We can attempt to rebuild again. But we will never be the same. We will never stand on that same pedestal again. 
So this isn't me, but this is my closest approximation to what failure feels like. When you hit the water, you realize that this speed of rushing cannot last forever, and it doesn't. It is jarring, it is surprising, and it hurts like hell. So what do you think was the first thing I did when I got pulled out of the water? Did I thank whoever controlled the cosmos that I was alive? Did I apologize to my brain for ignoring its many and repeated warnings? The very first thing I did was fix my hair because I'm pretty sure I looked like our little friend up there. So this is me, um, some sort of triple axle after the fact. And I say I fixed my hair and I was surprised but not surprised because fixing my hair meant that I was feeling vulnerable. And when I was pulled out of the water, I was nothing but vulnerable. Wet, sodden, every flaw and failure was on display. And when that happens to you, you feel directionalist. Think about it, I was hanging upside down, right? That feeling of failure makes you feel like you have no idea where you're going. And even if you start moving, you have no idea if you're on the right path or if this path will lead to a new success or a new failure. But I've come to realize after scrolling through the social media highlight reels, and I've had a little bit more time to do that these days, is that the only difference between us and them, or you and them, is that we know almost everything about them, and they hardly know anything about us. What we have is not an individual failure in action, but a collective failure in awareness. We see their strengths, their successes, their celebrations, but we don't see their struggles. We think they only see our struggles and our missteps, but not our successes. Now, Jeffrey Deaver has this great quote, on the good days, on the bad days, the sun always sets. Now, this can be equally optimistic and terrifying, but it also means that this is only temporary. And I take that as a positive, but also to encourage you to think about that fall. But of course, you can feel like when you're in that moment attempting to be a part of this collective humanity that everyone experiences, sunrise, sunset, you really are standing on the sidelines. So I think about those people who overshare on social media. Perhaps they're sitting on the sidelines, truly just desperate to be seen. So I don't necessarily have any great insights or wisdom or advice for you this evening. I did choose the road less traveled, or in fact, it was chosen for me, and I still don't know where the hell I am. But I do know now that that's okay. Failure has built my path and has continued to push me forward. And no one is a failure as long as they keep moving. So I invite you to close with this invitation by Oriya. I want to know if you can live with and within failure. The paths we walk are long, they're winding, they're steep, but they're also wide. There is room for company on that path. So I invite you to follow that path with me and to walk it with me, because I too could use the company. Thank you. Thank you.